Hmm. Uh, speaking of fuck, fucking up, let's jump into uh, my top 10, the uh, the good list with all the right answers that are <laughs> that is indisputable. Where the fuck did I put my list? Oh, no. Oh, shit, everybody. We ran out of time. We can't go over. Yeah, we got to go. Uh, yeah. Thanks for listening to the Game <laughs> Session podcast. <laughs> All right. Um, so here's my wow. top 10 of the list. I do have an honorary. I, I thought I would be the only one, but everyone stole my thunder. <laughs> That's oh, I don't have an honorary. I just put 11 on my list because I don't care. <laughs> Breaking well, actually, the rules. I, think I, I don't know. Um, Go on, I'm sorry. My number 11 is Persona 5 Royal. I put it honorary because it's 95% of that is basically just Persona 5. Um, all the additions they made um just to the combat and the way that personas have extra uh skills and whatnot there, there's just a lot of nice tuning refinement similar to what happened in persona 3 um fes and then also persona 4 golden it's pretty similar to that um oddly i don't much care for the extra semester that they did because it gets because persona 5 already has a pretty solid conclusive ending and this just kind of staples another 40 hours on top of that. And there's, there's, there's more stuff like kind of strewn throughout like the main part of the game. But to have like this nice clean conclusion, then just throwing another thing on that that arguably has a worse conclusion, even if it is enjoyable, just kind of leaves a sour taste in my mouth. And plus that's, I think I put 200 hours into it. So at least I got my money's worth. <laughs> Didn't Persona you play the... Having... Oh, go on, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, no, no, you're good. I was going to say, Persona having an unnecessarily added on thing that brings down the overall narrative, I never would have guessed. Not a very tight narrative. (laughs) Again, Persona, not a very tight narrative. I'm sorry. Fans at home, I don't really like Persona, so I kind of shit on it a lot. But I I won't shit on people that enjoy it as long as you don't excuse the gross shit in it. I do want to play one and two, though. I hear they're pretty rad. Well, two. I hear one's a... Well, it, it's play. weird. There's the Persona 3, 4, and 5. They never released 1 and 2. It's kind of weird. It's, it's funny for like... <laughs> oh my God. So, so 5 was my first Persona. And it's funny like how much of the parts that made it Persona were the parts I disliked the most. Wait, what didn't you like? Like the time limit, um, uh, um, S-Links, all that stuff. But the, the actual RPG, which which it was the most of the Persona games like SMT was the part I liked the most. So I think Um, I just like SMT. (laughs) I mean, for me, it was kind of whenever I'm invested in, because the game's basically cut in half into like, here's the social sim part. And then Mm -hmm. here's the um, RPG part. And I like both of those fairly equally, but uh, both sections can drag on depending on how efficient you are with uh, digging through the dungeons. Yeah. So there, there'll be times where I'm doing nothing but social stuff for five hours because I already cleared the dungeon in that mm-hmm. specific time limit. There's yeah. other times I'm doing a dungeon for 10 hours. I'm like, fuck, I could really just go for some social stuff. Um, yeah, pa- pacing. Uh, the word pacing does not exist in that mm-hmm. fucking series. No. It is not a thing. Also, I, I do wish it was a little bit more fully full press turns that like the press turn light of the combat system but uh yeah, yeah. persona 5's good game I give a uh, respect give, oh sorry give give the graphic designer a fucking raise that's all absolutely. i'll say oh absolutely like if there's absolutely. one thing i'll never give persona as a series shit for is they always have their designs the i don't know that artist's name but who does who's done the design work like since i think two or three like all looks or even earlier like it all looks great um, and I will show respect to Persona 5 Royal for taking out a phobic um, I wish there was more done with care of the overall narrative. I've gone on and on about... I promise I won't tangent. I've <laughs> gone on and on about the fact that I think it's fucked up that a game so centered around like youth being uh, discriminated against, treated horribly, flat out abused, literally having like one of the first people you fight is like a teacher who's a sexual predator of his students. And then that game has a romance mechanic with one of your teachers. It just feels like not. Cool. Yeah, it's, I get that it's, it's a dangerous. Japanese trope, but I don't care if the character is technically eighteen or not, or if it's indetermined. Mm-hmm. That's fucked up. It's still but, power dynamics at play, and it's grooming. Exactly. It's not fucking right. Exactly. The but I, I respect that positive too. things are changing. 
Oh, sorry, um, Mesa, what did you say? No, you're fine. I was just saying like, the power dynamic in that specific um, link is weird, too. Yeah. Oh, I also want to say, so awkward, I, um, yeah. if if you romance uh, Futaba, who is essentially oh. your surrogate little sister, yeah, you're, uh, you're Ooh. fucked up. Ooh. That's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah, those... I didn't even know about that. Those and I was literally are... like, maybe I'll play it at some point okay. with a critical eye, and now I don't even want to do that. Okay, uh, that. just see... So you... Hey, I'm gonna say something. It's bad. The the most annoying Persona Five people are the people that romance Futaba. Futaba <laughs> <laughs> the nerd with the long yes. hair. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The, the one who looks Mori. like she's fucking thirteen or twelve, but she's yes. like, I guess she's seventeen. I don't know. No, no, she's. I think she's like in middle school or something. Are you serious? No, 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 wait, not middle school, wait. like early high school. Like, like you're no, no, she, like I, if, if I recall she's correctly, nine. she's like in middle school going to high school. That's still gross. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just like a whole surrogate little sister just like, yeah, no, I'm I'm good. <laughs> That'd be like if in Persona 4 you could romance Nanako. Uh, there's basically. people that want that shit. I, I know. I'm, I know. I'm sorry we're freaking you out, Storm. <laughs> no, you're not freaking me out. I'm just like, wow. I, yeah. I, every time I think the Persona fan base as a whole can't get... But good, is good, no though. No offense to people I, present. I, I promise the game is fun, Storm. Please play. Just don't do bad older. I burned out on Persona 5, the original, when I had it. I played it for, like, uh, 15 hours, and I just... It didn't grab me in the way that I thought it might. I'll go back to it eventually, but I, the problem is I need short games. I have too many long games to play. If a game is a hundred hours, if a game is a hundred hours, I don't play it because I just I, who has a hundred hours to spend on games? I have too much. I have like eight podcasts I have to edit. Who has time for that? I I, I, I hate to admit, uh, if you want to count the original Persona Five, I've played the I've I've played it three times. <laughs> Jesus, I like I mean that's fine. I've also each. replayed the Mass Effect trilogy eight or nine times so like we all have our thing right mm -hmm. you know yeah well my dad works in nintendo we can get, get you banned from xbox <laughs> 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 anyway going down excited for scramble. Excited for, i am excited for scramble though scramble does look cool mm -hmm. it's a nice that's, persona 5 too that's how i like my eggs <laughs> Same, oh bro. blaine i meant to tag you in a twitter thing we were going on a little pun frenzy uh relating to eggs you gave up What's yeah, up with I was that? Busy that day. <laughs> Says the pun loser. Oh my goodness! I, I was how about that list? I was pretty ecstatic about it. Uh, um, boo. Num number ten. Um, I'm gonna go with Jedi Fallen Order, which you know technically came out last year, but we were doing our awards um, kind of like in the same similar fashion as uh, the game awards. Um, honestly, I think it's just been too much time since I've played it, so like vividly remember every single detail. But it is a damn solid Metroidvania Souls-like game, and it feels weird mm -hmm. to like kind of reduce it down to those terms, especially when there's like so much personality to it with the story and the environments that you're traversing. But it's just a damn solid game, and I would recommend jacking that difficulty up to whatever you're kind of comfortable with, because playing it just like on what's kind of a breeze, I doesn't really defeat the narrative purpose. I don't think those two are really necessarily conjoined. But I think it will be a better experience if you leave enough room of a challenge for yourself. Um, also, the double lightsaber, fuck yeah, yeah, that Hell deserved yeah, a higher really... best moment than it got. Oh, it's it's so it's just the fact you just like a... you just stumble across. You're like, oh shit! Yeah. You can get it way earlier than you're supposed to. Thing, I'm gonna play it. It's like it's looking for something phenomenal. in your fridge. And you I really love it. Steak dinner. Let's see. Oh, Number nine there. is uh, Gears Tactics. The story's kind of whatever, but I'm a sucker for XCOM. I'm a sucker for Mario and Rabbids, which, you know, I think people still slept on that game. That game's fucking phenomenal. It's great. I have it on my Switch. It's fun as hell. Just upgrade your character so you can do, like, hell it dash damage. You don't even have to fire a gun. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, but Gears Tactics is a really solid... Um, I almost said RTS. Uh, <laughs> strategy game. And... Um, and like so, so some of the divergences it makes away from XCOM is, um, I, no, I guess I do still have separate classes, but there's a much bigger emphasis on using the ability Overwatch, where you know if anyone moves within your line of sight, so you get a free action. And kudos to uh, actually given over over uh, watch a defined like cone of vision in XCOM. It's really freaking vague. I believe there's mods you can use to like tell exactly like 
what um, what the range is for both you and enemies. But um, just just kind of like falling in line with how uh, maybe not the multiplayer for you since everyone's dashing around with a shotgun like a jackass. But at least <laughs> in the campaign, yeah, you know, it's every people hiding behind. Every yeah. franchise should have an isometric tactics spinoff like Gears Tactics or Mario versus Rabbit. Oh, um, fuck yeah. They they sell themselves and, you know, crazy people like me love to play them even We've, I've played like I've played and beaten XCOM two, and I've played and beaten XCOM one, and I'm gonna get Mechanicus at some point, and I have Mario and Rabbids, but I haven't dipped too far into it yet, and I'm gonna play Gears Tactics when I replay the series. I may have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really solid one of those. I played it on PC. Uh, the controller support was not great at the time I played it, but now that it's out on um, Xbox, I would imagine it's a bit more tidied up there. That might be the better way to play it um I, it's, it's a little bit lower on the list just because the final boss is very tedious it can take very it can take a real long time to get through it and uh there's a lot of artificial pacing in the story because there's story missions and then there's side stuff um i don't know if they know what the definition of side missions are because they're mandatory in order to complete the game so it's just like the most artificial pacing that you could put in there. And it's like, it's it's kind of meant to give you upgrades and level your characters up. But I was already maxed out. So I'm just like, well, fuck, I don't want to do these missions. Just let me play the story ones in it. And you just, you just can't. It's, it's uh, like if they force you to do that thing you can do in XCOM where you'll just move around past time purposely so you can research things, even though all you have to do is just play the last mission and beat the game. Exactly. Uh, number eight on my list is Resident Evil 3, which I believe you also had on yours, Blaine. Oh, yeah. Um, just a really solid uh, entry in the series. It's, it doesn't hold that, that special charm that the Resident Evil 2 remake did. It's much more linear. There's like some kind of open open hubs. Um, I did actually enjoy the dodge feature a lot, especially when I accidentally did my nightmare run challenge before I got like any of the defense up or like any of the special items you're supposed to be using. Um, so the final boss was one hit and I'm just dead. So I had to get the, the dodging precisely every single time and all of uh, the final bosses like tentacle whips. Uh, that was a good five hours of my life at, at three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't I started have to do the that. hardcore run through and I only bought like oh, there, I bought I'm oh, sorry. Go go on, sir. I was just gonna say, like, there there is so much worse than than hardcore in there, trust no, me. No, I believe it. It gets so bad. Well, because like I got up to I think the acid fight with Nemesis on hardcore, and I don't know if I've soft locked myself or not. Because I have like I, uh, I don't know. Just like I did, I bought like the I bought things instead of buying the items that make boost your stats. I instead like I bought the bolt cutters and I bought the lock pick, so I could just do all that in the beginning and just grab everything, not realizing it's not really a good idea to try and do speed run in hardcore as well as like just trying to beat hardcore. I should have done that on like normal or something. Yeah, especially since you only have like so many challenges you can do to like accumulate those points mm -hmm. and um. I unfortunately made the decision to get all the achievements for it on the Xbox version, which means I had to sit in that stupid set piece. You're in the hospital as Carlos and uh, you're just getting swarmed by base zombies because one of the challenges is like, I don't know, get 10,000 kills with an assault rifle. So I had to keep reloading that checkpoint for like five hours <laughs> and just keep unloading and it, it wasn't a yeah. fun platinum, and I did it anyway. I, I fucking hate myself for that. Uh, number right seven there. is uh, Miles Morales. I think we've kind of elaborated that on last podcast. It's just a really fucking solid game. I have no real solid complaints against it. Uh, number six, and I feel like more people really need to play this. Uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a fucking beautiful game. It's the... And I really enjoy the change for from the uh, combat from the original because the original your default attack was a little orb that would follow you around it's just kind of launching little homing attacks and you can move around the entire time it doesn't mess with your movement it's completely independent of yourself so there's basically no moment in combat where you should stop just mashing the x button um they changed that up in ori 2 where um the i guess the closest equivalent to what it feels like is if you've played Mega Man X, it feels like you're playing like zero, except your sword has a much longer range and mm -hmm. it feels fucking phenomenal to play with. And you get a whole bunch of other upgrades you can customize. 
uh, basically what your offensive capabilities are. And I, th I believe you can change them on the fly if you or no, maybe there's more of a hard locked menu you have to go to. I, d I don't recall, but it's it's fucking beautiful. Made me cry. That ending is something else. And uh, it's on Game Pass, so you can play it on Xbox and you can play it on PC. It's also on Switch. Um, I don't think anyone really has an excuse not to play it. And it's you don't even need to play Ori one. You can just jump straight into the second one. It's better on essentially every single front. Uh, let's see. Number five is Astros, which we've talked about at length. Uh, my number four could also easily be my number one in the sense that it is the most unique experience that I've had that these nothing else on this list was able to give. And that's Among Us mm -hmm. specifically because um, I had always kind of been a lurker on forums, whether it's Reddit or Reset or whatever. So I was never really part of like like a part of the community. But jumping into the SGGC community um, back in August, just let me meet so many uh, kind and caring people. They're like enthusiastic about games, such as Blaine and um, and Matt here. And so it was kind of the perfect storm for me at that that moment that Among Us was was picking up. I believe in October is when it kind of really jumped off. Mm -hmm. And there, there's nothing quite like just jumping in a room with nine friends. And it's just a social deception game, being able to lie to each other, like learning the ins and outs. Um, there's nothing quite like knowing for a fact that you're a crewmate and everyone still suspects you anyway. And you have to try to talk your way out of it. You're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Like you stumble across a body. It's just like, what, what do I do? You see, the and, problem, uh, though, is when you make statements like, I saw so-and-so. I, I saw learned them, from that. I learned so hard. I found out that you didn't actually see the I events. Know. You just assumed they did. Yeah, I have to bring this yes. up every time you bring yes. it up. Seth. For what it's worth, that was my second time playing. And in other servers that I play in, I am basically Bronson 2.0. I am very glad. Oh, good. Okay. I, I freaking, I freaking clutched... Um, the last game we had played too. Damn, just Among Us, especially if you're playing on mobile, it's just it costs nothing to get into it, and it's even oh, on yeah. Switch now too. Correct. Oh, yeah. And Game Pass, it Switch, it, yeah, and it's Epic, Game Pass. Epic Store too. Or it's going to be on Game Pass soon, or it's already on no, it's on Game Pass right now on um, PC. And then on Xbox, it's going to be I think early 2021, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, And uh, we might not be able to get to the news story, but uh, Fortnite trying to come for Among Us with their Spy Within mode, which is basically just emulating it. Uh, fuck off, well, Fortnite. Let Among Us be its own goddamn thing. <laughs> well, let's, you already have enough money. Let's also but, be fair to, like, um, I forget what company. Uh, Overkill. They made a game. Or the, I don't know, the company that made Overkill? Or, I can't remember if they, they're, they're called Overkill. They made a game called Impossible Spaceman that came out a week before... Among Us got big, and it's basically the same thing. Yeah, you know? and yeah. it's really unfair. <laughs> I've heard it's fun, but I'm also like number one, literally, not that what you just said, but also number two. I this is allegedly because I haven't se I I've seen a few screenshots, but I haven't looked deeper into it. Like apparently the the guy who created it or like the mate the lead dev might be a total creep. I've mm. seen some screenshots of him like jumping in people's DMs. Like I'm gonna jump in that. Oh yeah. shit. Yeah. But anyway, but yeah. Uh, Among more Us more verification is, just... is needed before I make a hard statement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Among Us has just been a special game that nothing else on this list has been able to emulate. So in many mm -hmm. ways, it's actually number mm -hmm. one. But for now, it's just oh, yeah. on four. Uh, number three would be the Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, it feels cliche to say it, but seven was my favorite gr growing up. At least until I learned that nine is actually the one true uh, Final Fantasy god. You're allowed. Uh, I'm sure. allowed to be right. I understand. Yeah, you are allowed to be right. <laughs> yeah, you didn't think I was going to fucking be like, oh, yeah, no, I mean, you're right, though. Like, I'm not going to deny that. Even though it's not my favorite, I nine is like a turning point in the series of back to fantasy, but still keeping the quality of life improvements that they had going forward. So I am not going to argue that. Boom. Yeah. That um, just happened. The, the changes to the um, more action RPG versus traditional, um, I, I guess Final Fantasy VII, the original, wasn't exactly turn-based. It's the uh, ATB system. But um, I, I'm just surprised how well it still worked. And, uh, yeah. Basically. <laughs> and um, 
it's basically crisis core on crack yes and yeah. just like all the presentation the story's on point like you could, people can have their complaints on um you could you could say condensed nature and that the game is only up until after you're about to leave midgar but you could also call it bloated because they do have to blow that up to about I, I don't recall how long it took me to beat it, like, like 40 hours or so. Yeah, 40 if you take your time, but you could probably blast through it in like 20 if you really yeah. want to. But uh, the entire time, I just had a smile on my face. Like, this is my, like, I can be biased. This is my fucking childhood. But I think on the gameplay front, on the story front, it just excels in every single department. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, that ending, though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I want to see. I want to see if I can phrase this in a way that is not a spoiler. Like the word remake in the title is, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, I mean, okay. Like something, okay. Something crazy that I saw someone, well, I thought it was crazy. And now I believe a hundred percent is the whole idea of like, Oh, I think that final fantasy remake is a sequel to advent children. You play the game and you rewatch it because I rewatched Advent Children Complete recently and re- realized, wow, that movie holds up so much better than I expected it to. <laughs> and at least the complete version. Yeah, the complete version. The original I think is fine, but yeah, I, there's there's stuff in the complete one, including like the weird like no blood in the original release, and now the blood in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think I think Final Fantasy Remake is literally a sequel to Advent Children, oh, and I will not be taking any other questions at this time. <laughs> All true Final Fantasy VII fans know that uh, not the worst entry in the series, Dirge of Cerberus, actually has the furthest events chronologically that would lead to more uh, Genova nonsense. I mean, they put stuff from Dirge of Cerberus into Seven Remake, so that's kind of uh, bananas. Makes yeah. me so angry. Like, I love it. Vincent is my favorite character in the game. Dirge of Cerberus sounded so amazing, and then I actually played the damn thing. And oh, it's hot trash, you know, but I, you know, I wanted to throw it. my PlayStation out the window. When I played it as an edgy teenager, I thought it was the fucking shit. You yeah, like you Gakpo. were very wrong. You don't like Gact being a prominent fucking player at I the mean, very, very end of the game? To be fair, I was also... Dirge of Cerberus. I mean, to be fair, I was also playing Shadow the Hedgehog at around the same time. Ugh. My soul. I love Shadow the Hedgehog. It's one of the best reward <laughs> systems in, in video games. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, the it's better game you with do, the endings. less of the game you play. Yeah. With the Chaos Control. Chaos Control. Oh, you just skip half the level and you're done. <laughs> That's how you know it's good. Yeah. <laughs> time savers. <laughs> Yeah. But before my, but it's a time saver. You don't have to pay for it. It's even better. Well, I I don't know if the next game on this list meets the uh, the gravitas of the story of Shadow the Hedgehog driving around in a motorcycle with a gun and saying, "Damn!" But uh, the Last of Us Two is taking uh, Last of Us Two is c- kind of tied with the first game on this list. It can kind of go either way because they're both up there for completely opposite reasons. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm. I, I know we've kind of gone in length about a lot of the issues with Last of Us 2 in previous videos. Uh, one of them is linked in the chat. And um, for for me, it's def... It's not like the... I, I've never understood the, the complaint about like, oh, Naughty Dog gameplay is bad. I think it's serviceable. It's not going to feel like you're playing Call of Duty in terms of like the snappiness. It is what it is. It's action survival horror. Um... But for me, it all just comes down to the story and the emotion that it's able to convey to you. And mm-hmm. without going into spoilers, it it's able to make you feel ways about certain perspectives in a way that a movie, the way that a book would never be able to emulate. And for the climax, um, for the theater uh, event, to, to be vague about it, uh, that's probably going to be one of my most favorite moments in a game for for fucking years to come. Like the fact that it, it was able to. Uh, I mean, before that, it was still making me kind of flip perspectives to be on the opposite end of things. But that was just like the I, I was conflicted at that moment, and then what also happens at the end. But the fact that I was down for what was about to happen from the other perspective. I think that says a lot about the writing in the game. And I, I know there's kind of like um, 
parallels to that. I think Blaine, you had mentioned uh, there's some uh, near stuff or some other uh, Yoko Taro stuff that um, does similar things to different effects. Yeah. Here's here's possibly the nicest thing I'll ever say about the last of two, and it's, it might sound like a backhanded compliment, but I genuinely that way. The Last of Us <laughs> 2 is very, very good, at, like you said, at getting you to feel the way it wants you to feel, and it even is very good at getting you to stop to stop automatically inserting yourself into the player character or the main character and have you actually kind of go, wait, do I want to be on this person's side or not? I think it ultimately fails at what it sets out to accomplish, just personally, but I don't deny that it did at least have me up until it did. If that makes any sense. That mm -hmm. does. Absolutely. And I, again, I'm not going to go on about the trans stuff. I, that's in the video that Jose posted, um, as well as my issues with the poor narrative. Go, But, um, and, you know, uh, my problems with that, my problems with uh, Neil Druckmann, being a shithead on Twitter aside, um, <laughs> I think that the people on the the base level that really that wanted to make something special did a good job. Um, I would even, uh, as a note on the the gameplay thing, I would actually say if anything, the gameplay is too good, and I would like to see it dialed back to something that doesn't that doesn't clash with the narrative theme. I really liked. I I know uh, in my video I kind of like compared it to like the uh, Metal Gear Solid Five stealth, where you know you're kind of like throwing yourself on the ground, hiding in yeah. bushes, going like you under can, like, cars feel and the whatnot. Thud visually, as you see you do it. <laughs> mm hmm. Um, so like a lot of that stuff was really good. Like, the, like the impact, uh, the way that enemies react to, to being hit wherever they're, where they're getting shot or whether it's a blunt object or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, um, I think my biggest complaint non-story wise would basically, I, I, I guess you can, you could call it story is just the pacing. There's a lot, there's, there's way too many like open-ended spaces. There's nothing going on. You can argue like, yes, you need that pacing from story beats because that way you can come down. So that way when something does happen, it's more exciting that way. Um, and, and people often point to the pacing issues towards the end of the game. That's one specific part where I don't mind it whatsoever because I feel like that's the intended effect. Um, but enough I about love Last of Us. We really do have like polar opposite takes on this game. I do. Like, you know I, I love you. No sarcasm, of course. <laughs> um yeah number one on the list and uh i had a little mini rant printed out somewhere because and like this is this is not anything personal against like anyone in the gaming sphere whatsoever i guess it's just more is disheartening the word i want to use um no one in the critic sphere like any of the podcasts i really listen to and i listen to way too many podcasts that's all i do at work for eight hours a day well <coughs> nowadays with the holiday stuff i'm working like 10 hours a day um uh doom eternal like no one is really talking about it. and like i i want to say like giving it the credit for what it's doing from like a pure game design point of view like it is hands down one of not one of i i, I believe that it's the most tightly designed games of not just this year but not just this generation like games of all fucking time like the way every single system intermingles with each other whether it's the, it's the glory kills it's the dashes the blood punch uh the way that specific weapons and uh, way specific weapon mods are um they have their strengths and tackling certain enemies the way you have different challenges um collectibles and whatnot like everything is just so intermingled together and it just it's just such a freaking cohesive package where like yes there is a lot of stuff you do have two different kinds of grenades you have a flame belt you have a sword you can use and it can feel a little bit too much with everything coming at you at once but once you master it and maybe it's because i've i've played a lot of mmos where your skills are kind of like on a cooldown. so if you're able to manage them and chain them in very specific ways especially with certain weapons um you can pull some really crazy shit off. Like you can go up towards an enemy who has a AOE attack that, that they do. If you get close to them, like they launch it on the ground. So it's not like immediately in their face. So you can, let's say you, you can jump, use a grapple on the shotgun to launch yourself towards them, shoot them. They're about to launch the thing on the ground. You can uh, dash back and then hook back in. You can jump to other things, chain glory kills. It's, it's just such a fucking beautiful 
uh, cohesive shooter and it feels weird. Like, like the story's cool. I wouldn't say it's like t- uh, top tier stuff. Um, I know Blaine touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, but it just like, e- like even like in best action, I feel like it kind of got robbed. I mean, it, it did get nominated and that in the end of itself is a pretty damn high award, but it, it feels like it kind of got bypassed by. I mean, I loved Doom 2016, and I played it for the first time back in February of this year and fell in love with it. I thought it was phenomenal. And I just never picked up Eternal, and I don't think it was because I didn't want to play it. It's on Game Pass on PC now, so I'm going to play it. But I think I think I just thought I got what I wanted from Doom 2016. And what I've heard is Doom Eternal is better in every way, uh, but I haven't played it yet. But I, your your impassioned plea about it definitely makes me more interested to get to it. And I don't think I'm going to get to it till next year. But you know, uh, Doom Etern- Doom 2016 made me remember that I like first person shooters because I'd forgotten. You know, I haven't played a lot of them lately, and it reminded me that they can be really tight and really fun. And I've heard that Doom Eternal is just that plus more. I think um, because that that came out in 2016 alongside Titanfall 2. And I would say like those two games are responsible for actually breathing new life into the genre. Mm -hmm. And I would argue Doom more so just because it's more hyper specific. It's not about aiming down your sights. It's about running around as fast as you can, um, jumping all over the place. And it's just so special for that. I remember when like Doom Eternal first came out and seeing... um... Sunil Legend on Twitter like posted because Sunil Legend would post like Devil May Cry stuff and like other character games like built around either character action or like whatever you would classify like a god a god hand as like those kinds of games mm-hmm. with all character these cool action. combos yeah, yeah. and um, like doing that same thing with Doom Eternal and you just seeing these like you describe the combos you can say but like it, it's like it, it's it's a marriage of so many cool things and um like actually uh ironically enough like today i mentioned this before the podcast but uh, it's important it's actually worth bringing up now i just like a day ago bought the um night dive port slash i want to almost almost call it a remaster but i don't know if you would call it that of, of blood and um i have not had this much fun playing a first person shooter in a long time and it actually made me remember it made me realize like Aside from like Doom Eternal, and again, like I didn't play Titanfall too, but I've heard I've heard exactly what you're talking about, and I, from what I've seen, I agree. I've seen those those bones in Apex Legends, even though I've really not played that extensively at all. Like, it's not that FPS is a bad genre; it's that the whole genre seems to be so oversaturated with just what is a Call of Duty like or what is a Medal of Honor like, and nothing else mm-hmm. that like when you get a Doom Eternal or a Titanfall 2 slash Apex Legends, or you play this port of a game that came out in, like, the 90s, like, you're sitting there going, holy shit, I thought FPS games were all the same and suck. But no, they're actually really fun when you and can use interesting game ideas with them, or design ideas with them. I completely right? forgot to mention, um, I think uh, John, John Muncher had mentioned this, uh, Doom Eternal has the perfect format for a new metroid prime game there's like Mm. so much like you can just go through it like as a linear shooter if you really want to but looking at that map seeing where the secrets are trying to like deduce where they are if you have if you don't have that skill unlocked it does feel a bit like a metroidvania game even if you're not necessarily going back with new tool sets like previous levels but it also I, I think you could unironically put Doom Eternal down as one of the best platformers of the year because there's so oh, much of it, even more so than um, than uh, Doom 2016. And combining that in like in the middle of of uh, fights too is it's fucking beautiful. Grabbing the walls and then grabbing a pole and then grappling hook with the super shotgun like uh, such good shit. It seemed like yeah, it seemed like Doom 2016 helped yeah revive the the boomer shooter. Uh, genre of <laughs> FPS. Um, <laughs> I keep I, I forgetting that's to, a term. I love to see how um, uh, uh, turn back in my effects. day. Well, yeah, like actually, like, actually, back in my day, the gun was in the middle, like <laughs> like big fat, like actually. And Eternal has that mode where you can put the gun in the middle, which I think is pretty mm. funny. I know it's so good. It's charring, but it's great. 